what releases might we see from the Beatles and the solo members of the Beatles in 2024. It's that time of year again to try and predict. It's impossible to predict, but let's try and look at what's likely and what's not likely over the next year. I'm going to look at releases from John, Paul, George, Ringo and the Beatles here to try and see what we might get. First of all, though, I'm just going to look at a few books that we may or may not get in 2024. The big three hitters uh, in terms of ongoing projects of Beatles books at the moment. First of all, there is the Music is Ideas, Paul McCartney reference books by Luca Parisi. We had volume one this year. It looks uh, likely that we will get volume two towards the back end of 2024, and that's going to cover Paul McCartney's career from 1990 through to the present day. If we don't get it at the end of 2024, it should be early 25, but I know that Luca is hoping to have that out in 24. There's also the McCartney Legacy books by Adrian Sinclair and Alan Cosin. So again, we had the first volume in 2023. Now, we're probably just going to miss 2024 with this. That might just slip into next year. But if we're lucky, we might get that at the back end of this year. But don't hold your breath for that one. The big one, Mark Lewis and Tune In, Volume 2. When is that going to happen? Personally, I don't think it looks like it's happening in 2024. That's that's just based on a hunch from uh, how it looks like these things are going. I think 2025 looks to be a lot more promising. I hope in a year's time, I'm sat here saying, I think this is on its way. Finally, volume two of that amazing book. So they're just uh, some sort of other projects, not official Beatles releases that uh, we may or may not see this year. So let's go to Ringo Starr. We know that Ringo isn't really interested in releasing albums anymore, but he does love to charge album price for an EP. When his fourth EP came out a few months back, it was also said that he has recorded and about to record two more EPs. So we may well get one or more of those this year in 2024. Uh, one of those is said to be a country flavoured uh, EP. So you may well be buying two albums worth of stuff there for a couple of EPs. The other big question with Ringo is, are we finally going to get uh, a 50th anniversary release of the Ringo album? Well, it's already been missed by a year, but so many projects uh, recently seem to have slipped by about a year. Is that an ongoing effect of... Covid backlog being caught up still? Maybe? I don't know, but uh, there's still no firm knowledge on, on a Ringo expanded release. But if that's going to happen, it's probably going to be this year, this coming year or never on that. I don't see anything else uh, rumoured or suggested for Ringo at all, so potentially one or two EPs and hopefully he will dip his toes into the super deluxe market with a, with a Ringo version, but we'll see about that one. Then we move to the ever mysterious George Harrison camp. What on earth goes on there? We do not know. I am confident that for 2024, we're going to get something good. Uh, it's been suggested for a while that they are working on some sort of expanded version of the concert for Bangladesh. This was a 2005 release uh, DVD, which is a really good release. But like, like most things, it can be cleaned up more. There's probably more that, that can be added to this. I think we may well be on for a Bangladesh box set in 2024. I certainly hope so anyway. If not, then living in the material world, again, has that slipped by a year if we're going to get that? I think now that the, the control of George's catalogue is well uh, is well owned by the Dark Horse Records label, uh, obviously Danny and Olivia are, are in control of that, I think it's coming. It's been such a long time for George releases, but there was a, um, a message online a few months ago where Danny Harrison suggested to somebody that, uh, for example, a Cloud9 box set would be worked on, and he said, please be patient. So I think things are coming, uh, and hopefully they're going to start coming more often now, but I think probably Bangladesh might be a... a a hopeful bet for 2023, if not living in the material world. For John Lennon, this is where we've got some confirmed news. 2024 is going to be a good year here. So we know for a fact that Mind Games uh, Ultimate Edition is going to be coming. It looks as though it could be early June 2024. There is going to be, in that Mind Games box, um, it seems almost certain, 72 tracks spread over six CDs, two Blu-rays, and of course there will be a vinyl edition as well. 
And the Lennon camp did say a few months ago that that would be followed by more surprises later in the year. They've not gone into any detail about what those surprises are. Will it be another Ultimate Edition set? Are they, are they ramping up the, the speed at which they're going through those? That would be fantastic. Um, but if not, we've seen over the last few years that the, the Lennon camp does like to do, for example... Um, what you might call boutique niche releases that are either there to uh, help charities or with the case of the uh, the Gimme Some Truth white vinyl box set last year that was deliberately designed as a boost for record shops. Uh, I know for a fact that the, the, the Lennon estate didn't particularly make a great deal of money on that at all. It was designed to help record shops have, have uh, the margin in their favour. So whether it's going to be one of those kind of releases or whether it's going to be another big release... We don't know yet, but certainly look for something around June for the Mind Games box set, and then something we'll see what later on in the year from them as well. Paul McCartney releases are always the most difficult to predict. Uh, we always get a surprise. Uh, pretty much every year it seems something comes along, whether it's a 7-inch singles box set or the launch of a half-speed remaster campaign. Something comes along that takes us by surprise, and I don't expect 2024 to be any different to that. Some of the um, things on the periphery that we may or may not see before I come on to the, the main things with Paul... There's the Man on the Run documentary that MPL are producing, which uh, is going to cover Paul's solo career. It's going to be really in-depth. I hope it's going to be something like Wingspan, but in a lot more depth and a lot more detail, is how I see that going. Now, on the IMDB website, it still shows that as being in pre-production with very little detail. So, uh, unless they've made an awful lot of progress on that that uh, nobody knows about... I'm not so sure whether that's going to come in 2024. That may well go beyond, but what a great surprise it would be if that did come during the next year. Paul McCartney's also recently mentioned that the It's a Wonderful Life musical that he's written the music for is, now seems to be getting back on track. Uh, it was supposed to come out a few years ago. Looks like Covid probably put paid to it, but Paul suggested it's now actually happening. Um, and It's a Wonderful Life musical seems a little strange to me because surely that's Christmas based. Uh, what sort of market does have that have among theatre goers at other times of the year? I don't know. I'm sure people who know more about theatre have, have thought all this through. But could it be that towards the back end of 2024, in time for Christmas, that might be launched and we have a whole load of more of Paul McCartney's music? We will see. What we do have confirmed from Paul McCartney for February the 2nd, 2024 is the Band on the Run Half Speed Remaster Vinyl and CD Boxes, uh, with a, an interesting second disc this time. So we know that that's coming. The Half Speed Remaster campaign, I think, has been superb. I've really loved everyone that they've put out so far, and I'm lo really looking forward to hearing Band on the Run given that treatment as well. But of course, this time we've got this second disc, the underdubbed mixes, as uh, Paul is, is calling them. So on 14th of October 1973, after Paul, Denny and Linda had returned from Lagos, there'd been a little work, bit of work gone on in London, uh, but then Jeff Emmerich was asked to prepare some mixes. Now at this point, there was no orchestration added, there were some lead vocals hadn't even been recorded yet, and there were various overdubs that hadn't been recorded yet. But these mixes that Jeff Emmerich put together, these sort of rough mixes, they're going to be released for the first time. You can already hear the title track, Band on the Run, that's available on streaming, it's on Paul's YouTube channel. And I think that's going to be really interesting, I'm really looking forward to hearing that. So I will of course be um, showing those uh, uh, at the beginning of February when they come out, um, both the, the single disc and the second disc as well. Uh, we'll be able to see what those look like and I'll be bringing a review of that as well, how's the sound quality most importantly on those. It also looks like there is a great possibility that we're going to get a new Paul McCartney solo album in 2024. Very excited for that, if that happens. Um, especially if, if, if it's of this, a similar standard to Egypt Station and McCartney 3, I will be absolutely delighted because I've been so happy with those two albums, notwithstanding silly variants that um, I talked about in my last video that, that really annoyed me and, and still rankle a little bit, but putting that aside, a new Paul McCartney album would be fantastic. I will be all over that. Expect loads of variants of that. Of course, there's going to be loads of variants, but I don't worry too much about that at the time of release. 
it's like when a new car is released you know the, the, the ford have made a new car they're issuing it in black white red blue choose your color i see it the same with their uh, album releases you don't have to buy every color but if you want to fantastic enjoy it very much that's going to be produced by andrew watt who did the recent rolling stones hackney diamonds album and he's had a lot of praise for his production of that album so i hold out great hopes that it will be a good sounding album um as well as hopefully as hopefully good quality songs as well as i'm i'm sure it would be i, I don't see paul putting out an album that he's not happy with just just for the sake of it if he puts that album out I imagine he thinks it's good enough to carry his name, so I'll be delighted to see that. And then the big question with Paul McCartney is, what the heck else might we get? Well, like I said, there could be all sorts of surprises, but what about the archive collection? What is happening with that? Now, I remember I sat here a year ago uh, doing this uh, sort of equivalent video, and I said, if we don't see any archive collection in 2023, then I'll be concerned about the future of that series. And of course, nothing's happened this year. So am I concerned about the future of it? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, if, if Paul is going to bring out an album, let's say later in the year, because his last few have been in the sort of last half to third of a year, then does that leave some time sort of maybe in the springtime after the Band on the Run Half Speed remaster? Is there some time there to get one or two archive collections out, whether that's London Town, Back to the Egg, Press to Play, Broad Street, whatever. Um, please, please, can we have that? Um, if it's not this year, then I think Paul McCartney fans should officially declare, from our point of view, the archive collection dead, which will be an absolute travesty of a shame, I think. But what other conclusion could we draw? Um, there has now only been one archive collection released in the last five years and that's flaming pie um that does not suggest an ongoing series anymore so i really hope that at some point in the first half of this maybe towards the back end of the first half of the year please can we have one or more archive collections from paul mccartney uh the, there's no real rumors as yet there's, there's the, been the tiniest hints of rumors that something might be happening with that but nothing concrete that i can that I can pin my colours to uh, on that one. And then we come to the Beatles themselves after what turned out to be an incredible 2023 with uh, the Now and Then final Beatles song getting to number one in the UK singles charts. It was it really was a fantastic achievement. It took us all by surprise. We didn't, ex we didn't see it coming. So what might happen in 2024? Of course, in early February, it's going to be the 60th anniversary of the Beatles landing in America. Um, and doing those first concerts in America, Washington DC, doing the Ed Sullivan show, for example. So expect at least a lot of publicity around fe uh, February, especially on Beatles social media channels around that. Will there be any actual products released? For example, the Maisel Brothers first US visit film documenting the trip. Will, will they get some kind of official release? Then maybe expect an announcement back end of January, for example for something in February, but it'd be great if that could be marked with some kind of official product from the Beatles. Now, we know that Red and Blue, uh, the Red and Blue re-releases were quite a late decision. Uh, Giles Martins confirmed this. He said that when they knew that Now and Then was coming, they realised that they needed some sort of vehicle for it to be released with. Personally, I'm not so sure. I think Now and Then was capable of standing on its own two feet, but nevertheless, uh, they realised as well it was the 50th anniversary of Red and Blue albums, so let's let's reissue those. Giles Martin did those um, mainly great new remixes uh, for that for that album release. Some of them were um, a, a, a little confusing, but mainly I think great remixes. But that was a last minute decision. Hopefully now that that's done, that may well have pushed Rubber Soul back a year. Hopefully now they can a get back on track with what they would have done had there not been now and then and that forcing the need for red and blue. So expect probably to see Rubber Soul this year, a box set like we've had for, for example, Revolver being the last one and, and, and the other later albums. Hopefully that's coming this year. And I think the other thing that red and blue has surely done, well, especially the red album, has surely shown the Beatles camp um, and George uh, and Giles Martin 
that great remixes of those early Beatles songs using the MAL technology from Peter Jackson is possible for the Beatles uh, catalogue going right back to the beginning. When I say back to the beginning, I mean of their sort of main studio um, career with George Martin, so from sort of Love Me Do onwards. Whether they would go back further and look at things like the uh, In Spite of All the Danger, that'll be the day sessions back from uh, the, the 1950s, that remains to be seen. The Star Club tapes, for example. We know, for example, some of you might have missed this, but Peter Jackson did a, an absolutely immense podcast recently where he said that he's bought the Star Club tapes. He's a, he's a, He actually owns those now, the original tapes. And his plan is he's going to apply his mal technology to see what he can do to those Hamburg Star Club tapes. If he gets a result that he thinks is pretty good, then he will he will say to the Beatles camp, here's what I've done with the Star Club, are you interested? The Beatles camp will either say yes or no at that point. But Peter Jackson has bought those tapes, the original tapes, and he's working on them to see what he can do. That will be so exciting. I don't think I expect anything in 2024 for that might be a little bit soon but certainly let's get back on track with rubber soul then we can go confidently back to the please please me era over the next few years knowing uh, that giles martin is capable of uh, capable of doing very good remixes on those early songs he is I'm, i firmly believe that i know some people don't agree but i think what he's done on those early remixes is generally superb so there are a lot of unknowns in terms of the Beatles, John, Paul, George, Ringo, what they're going to release. It is impossible to predict and get 100% correct, but it's a bit of fun having a try. I, I hope I've shown some of the likely possibilities and where things that you may be hoping for, some of them might just take a little bit longer than 2024. Uh, so what are you hoping for this year? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want to see how well or badly I did a year ago predicting 2023, have a look at this video here. Thanks very much. I will see you during 2024. Have a happy new year and I hope you've had a great Christmas. See you later. Bye.